fellow dragons, Jess the Dragon here, and I should be joined by two guests today. <laughs> okay, guys. All right. As you can tell by the hat, it's almost Halloween. Okay. And today we're gonna be talking about superstitions. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can see really excited about Great it. Great enthusiasm. <laughs> oh. Why do you know how to talk fast? <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> so, basically today we're going to be talking about different superstitions and, like, the origins. Yep. Yeah, because we actually did research on these different superstitions. Yep. And... There's actually some that I didn't get on the list that we learned of yesterday. Or today. Yep. Yeah. Depending on who we are. No, actually, they were they were telling me about some of the superstitions that were on the list, and I was like, holy crap, that's actually a thing? Apparently. You girls better plug your ears, because I'm about to cackle. Okay. <laughs> you do that too good. <laughs> you. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I'm wearing a witch hat. I got a witch cackle at least one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Our first superstition on the list okay. is a black cat crossing your path. Oh, wow. We have a lot of stuff for this. So I'm going to pass to my first guest. Oh, which is me? Yes, Whitney. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know. Hi, I'm Aubrey. Okay. And what are your... You, your girls' YouTube handles? Um, I am Whitney Rocks thirty three twenty five, and I am Aubrey Re Rewired. If I can yeah. speak, yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so yeah, as uh Jess said, the first superstition that we're going to be talking about is a black cat crossing your path. Um, so basically with, with the research that we did, uh, the folklore surrounding black cats varies from culture to culture. The Scots believe that a strange black cat's arrival to the home signifies prosperity. In Celtic, in Celtic mythology, a fairy known as the Cat Sith takes the form of a black cat. Black cats are also considered good luck in the rest of Britain and Japan. Furthermore, it is believed that a lady who owns a black cat will have many suitors. In Western history, black cats have typically been looked upon as symbols of evil omens, specifically being suspected of being familiars of witches or actually shape-shifting witches themselves. Most of Europe considers the black cat as a symbol of bad luck, particularly if one walks across the path in front of a person, which is believed to be an omen of misfortune and death. In Germany, some believe that black cats crossing a person's path from right to left is a bad omen, but from left to right, the cat is granting favorable times. Hmm. In the United Kingdom, it is commonly considered that a black cat crossing a person's path is a good omen. The black cat in folklore has been able to change into human shape and act as a spy or a courier for witches or demons. Otherwise known as a witch's familiar. Yep. Yep. Pretty much. Yep. Um, so you got a back, you got a black cat? <laughs> she wishes. <laughs> okay. Got me there. <laughs> yeah. When the pilgrims arrived at Plymouth, um, anything deemed of Satan and... Wait, hold on. Okay. When they arrived at Plymouth Rock, they brought with them a devout faith in the Bible. They also brought a deepening suspicion of anything deemed of Satan and were a deeply suspicious group. They viewed the black cat as a companion or familiar to witches. Anyone caught with a black cat would be severely punished or even killed. Wow. They view I know. They <laughs> viewed the black cat as part of as a part demon and part sorcery. So gonna pause you right there. I wonder if any black cats were the cause of any witches hangings during the Salem witch trials. I I think I wouldn't so. be surprised. I wouldn't I would be sad. I want to do a little history oh. on you guys. Oh, oh, you know, you know what I also found out. Um, and I, I never told you guys this, but another thing that I found out with, when it comes to the uh, Salem witch trials, another thing that also deemed you a witch, and this is ironic because I have this trait. Another thing that people used to deem you as a witch is if you have green eyes like me. Oh, oh. 
Yeah, because green eyes are actually, um, for those of you who don't know, green eyes are actually a symbol of, they were originally deemed as a symbol of magic and mysticism. So Ooh. people people who had green eyes, people attributed the fact that they had green eyes to the fact that they had magic. Oh, hmm. I yeah, we green-eyed people are magical. <laughs> we are. I we're magical beings. I remember, um... <laughs> I believe that they would search uh, suspected witches for, like, blemishes or yeah. like, birthmarks. Or, and, or even anywhere birthmarks. So maybe even this right here. They I would, know. They I, might, you know. I'd probably be like. Yeah. And I would be. <coughs> for the fact that I have green eyes. And I would be. Because <coughs> I have a birthmark. <laughs> anyway, so continuing on with. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, okay. These superstitions led people to kill black cats. There is no evidence from England of regular large-scale massacres of satanic cats or of burning them in midsummer bonfires, as sometimes occurred elsewhere in Europe. In contrast, the supernatural powers ascribed to black cats were sometimes viewed positively. For example, uh, for example sailors considered a ship's cat would want a black one because it would bring good luck. Sometimes fishermen's wives would keep black cats at home, too, in the hope that they would be able to use their influence to protect their husbands at sea. The view of black cats being favorable creatures is, etch, is attributed specifically to the Egyptian goddess Bast, or Basset, the cat goddess. Egyptian households believed they could gain favor from, from Basset by holding black cats in their household. This view, this view was held in the early 17th century by the English monarch Charles I. Upon the death of his treasured black cat, he is said to have lamented that his luck was gone. True to his claim, he was arrested the very next day and charged with high treason. Pirates of the 18th century... Wow, it sucks to be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sucks to be you, dude. <laughs> Pirates of the 18th century believed that a black cat would bring different kinds of luck. If a black cat walks towards someone, that person will have bad luck. If a black cat walks away from someone, then that person will have good luck. Conversely, in the United Kingdom, if a black cat walks towards someone, it brings good fortune. But if it walks away, it takes the good luck with it. If a black cat walks onto a ship and then walks off, the ship is doomed to sink on its next trip. Oh. Oh, damn. Yeah. Well, then. Woo! And you know, they always say cats are fickle creatures. Yes, they are. Mm-hmm. What do they? What, I mean, what do they care? They have nine lives. <laughs> <laughs> what do they care? They don't it's need. It. They don't have a care in the world. Yep. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. Where was I? Um. Black cats have been found to have lower odds of adoption in American shelters compared to other colors except brown. Although black animals in general take more time to find homes. Some shelters also suspend or limit adoptions of black cats around Halloween for fear that they will be tortured or used as living decoration. Aww. What the fuck is wrong with people? Yeah, I already knew that oh part. Oh my it's god. Disgusting. Poor kitty cat. Living decorations for, ho for the holiday and then abandoned. Despite this, no one has ever documented in the history of humane work any relationship between adopting black cats and cats being killed or injured. When such killings are reported, forensic evidence has pointed to natural predators such as coyotes, eagles, or raptors as the sure. likely cause. Yeah. Coincidence? I, I think, think not! not! <laughs> um, August 17th is Black Cat Appreciation Day. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so on August 17th, appreciate your black cats. Yep. Neat. Or any black cat. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um... In the early days of television in the United States, many stations located on VHF channels 13 use a black cat as a mascot in order to make support of to make sport of being located on an unlucky channel number. Oh, nice! Oh, and fun fact: in Ireland, it's actually illegal to kill black cats. Oh, good. To be honest, they make it illegal to kill all cats. Yeah, I was, gonna say, I was gonna say why. I was gonna say it should be illegal to kill any animal. Yeah. Uh, all right, so I mean, unless it's for like. Food. Yeah. Okay, oh. keep going. <laughs> okay, so our next superstition of discussion is carrying the bride over the threshold. I'm going to pass it on to my other lovely guest. Okay. Oh. Um, uh, and these are, I was going to say, these are combinations of good and bad superstitions, yes, correct? Yes, yeah. Okay, yeah. just making sure. <laughs> All yeah, right. Carrying the bride over the threshold <laughs> is supposed to be good luck. Yes. So, when the groom carries the bride over the threshold... He is reenacting a very old tradition derived from many cultures, um, and one 
in which can be traced to Roman times. This ritual was carried out to protect the brides from worrisome demons that might be lurking about the new home. If she were to trip entering the doorway, it would bring bad luck to the couple. And this unhappy chance was avoided by just simply carrying her through the doorway and over the threshold. So, I mean, be manly and carry her over. That way you guys don't, like, have bad luck. Mm -hmm. Simple yeah. as that. Treat your girl right. Exactly! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, oh, and I don't know if this is on there, but uh, I, I found this, this superstition out recently. Um... They, some people say that if you, that, uh, when you cheers someone, you have to make direct eye contact with them or you'll have bad sex for seven years. Oh! Um, okay. Yeah, some people believe that. Some people I mean, believe I've heard, that. I like, the, if you drink before you, like, cheered with everyone, then that's bad luck. But, like, eye contact, whoa. Eye contact's yeah. important, No, guys. yeah, no, truly, some people believe that, that if you don't make direct eye contact with someone when you're cheersing them that you'll have bad sex huh. for seven years. Interesting. Yep. Okay. Don't know if it's true or not. Okay, yeah. so but. our next superstition of discussion is walking under a ladder. Oh. It's, it's considered bad luck. Yeah. There are a couple of theories about where the walking under a ladder is bad luck superstition came from. The one mentioned earlier is that walking under a ladder was akin to blaspheming which comes from the early days of Christianity. Many Christians are believers in the Trinity that God is made up of three parts. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Lost my place. <laughs> the Holy Father, the Holy Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or Holy Spirit. Yep. Yeah. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Thus, the number three was somewhat sacred, and the triangle was, by association, also sacred, with its three sides. A ladder leaning up against a building was seen as a triangle, the ladder making one side, the building making another, and then the ground connecting the two, making the third side. Oh, okay. To walk through this triangle, or by, walk, by walking under the ladder, was seen to be breaking the Holy Trinity. The Bible talks about the one unforgivable sin being blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. So, someone who breaks the Trinity is seen to be in league with the devil. And once I again, the devil. <laughs> and once again, being labeled such in the old days of Christian Christianity was a quick way to invite the hangman and witch trials. Mm. Another origin of the superstition was <clears throat> a bit less specific. And had to do with the similarities between a ladder leaning against a wall and a gallows. Anything associated with a gallows was considered ill luck. So, walking under one or a ladder that looked like one was not advisable. So, what to do if you realize you've just walked under a ladder and want to ward off the bad luck? You spit. Either you spit three times through the rungs of the ladder, or you spit on your shoe. Make sure you don't look at your shoe until the spit has dried. However, failing these tactics, cross your fingers until you find a dog, or simply back out the way you came in and make a wish. Oh, so you so to get oh so to counter the bad luck, you walk back through backwards and then make a wish. Or oh. you could spit through the rungs of the ladder three times, or just spit on your shoe. Oh, okay. All right. Don't look into the shoe. Into the, the don't look at your shoe until you. You know, I'll just cross my finger. Yeah, until I'll I find a dog. Yeah. <laughs> that seems like the easiest one to do, or yeah. walk backwards through where you came. Yeah. All um, right. So our next topic of superstition discussion is the lucky rabbit's foot. Okay. Ooh. So, yeah, I, 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 I have known people who have carried rabbit's foot, and I never understood why. Okay. So. <clears throat> so yes, the next superstition is the lucky rabbit's foot. A rabbit's foot in most English-speaking countries is considered a sign of good luck when carried on or near the body. Although the history of the lucky rabbit's foot is difficult to nail down, it is, it gener it is generally agreed that it became popular in America near the turn of the 20th century. Of course, if the rabbit's foot is lucky, by extension, the, com the converse is also true, and the absence of a rabbit's foot can bring at to bring an end to good fortunes. Although it is not clear why, through the ages, people have had the experience that carrying various kinds of objects has seemed to bring them good luck. 
or in some cases bad luck. Perhaps the object is, is a reminder that um, that tends to focus on their thoughts and energy, and it is actually the focus that brings along the beneficial results, or deteriorous results in the case of an object considered unlucky. In any case, objects like the rabbit's foot have enjoyed per persistent popularity over the centuries. The rabbit itself is generally imbued with a certain amount of superstition and symbolism. Rabbits tend to represent fertility. Yes. Interesting. Did not learn that until I actually... You've never heard You've never heard the term multiplying like rabbits? You've well, never heard that? Well, I didn't yeah. realize that the rabbit was linked with fertility. Okay. I didn't realize that. But you're, you're good at multiplying. <laughs> <laughs> Zootopia reference! <laughs> okay. European Celts held rabbits to be sacred because they spent mu so much time underground. A sign they were inhabited by Numia, or underground spirits. At the same time, some associated the rabbit with shape-changing witches, and certain elements of the rabbit's foot tradition seemed to reinforce th this darker side. The left side of an animal, as well as its rear half, were considered to be shady and had negative influence. The rabbit's foot has been seen by many as a sign and carrier of good luck while others have viewed it as a symbol of the forces of darkness. Thus, wow. the power with which the rabbit's foot is imbued depends both on the observer and the observer's worldview. Interesting. So it could be good or bad luck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, then. like, that's the thing with people that I've seen carrying rabbit's feet. They they always call it, like, their lucky rabbit's foot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, and, at least and, the people I've seen. And you know what's interesting? She told me this today. What did you tell me about the left Okay, yeah. so, listen up, y'all. So, in uh, biblical times, they it would always say that the right hand of God is, like, where you want to be. Like, uh, Peter was sat at the right hand of God, whoever. Yeah. But, so, the right hand was considered holy. Well, the left hand is usually what was, is usually how, if Satan was, like, writing something, he was depicted with writing it with his left hand. So the left hand is the unholy half of Oh, boy. So that's why left is usually unlucky with superstitions, especially if it came from a uh, more religious yeah. background. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Depending on the religion. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on to our next superstition of discussion, saying bless you when you sneeze. Oh, I've heard of this one. <laughs> okay. So, um, <laughs> saying bless you when you sleep sneeze is good luck. Um, there are varying accounts as the origin of this response. Um, one belief is that it, it originates in Rome when the bubonic plague was raging through Europe. One of the symptoms of the plague was coughing and sneezing, and it was believed that Pope Gregory the First or Gregory the Great suggested saying God bless you after a person sneezed and hope that the that this prayer would protect them from otherwise certain death. The expression in may have also originated, originated from superstition. superstition. Some people believe that uh, the custom of asking for God's blessing began when ancient men thought that the soul was in the form of air and resided in the body's head. It, a sneeze, therefore, might accidentally expel the spirit from the body unless God blessed you and prevented this from occurring. In some ancient cultures also thought that sneezing enforced evil spirits out of the body, endangering others because these spirits might now enter their bodies. The blessing was bestowed to protect both this person sneeze, the person who sneezed and the others around him. Yep. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. All right. On to our next superstition of discussion. Mm -hmm. Horse shoes over the doorway. Which actually, and we don't have any down here, but, like, on all the, pretty much all the major doors in my home, we have a, we do follow this tradition, we do have horseshoes hanging over the door. So, the story behind why people hang horseshoes above their doors goes all the way back to... 959 AD, and as you already know, it all has to do with luck. The lucky horseshoe is a big part of Irish folklore and history. The story of Dustin and the horseshoe varies greatly depending on where you look, but the gist of the story is that the 10th century, St. Dustin 
a blacksmith at the time, was visited by the devil himself. Ooh. The hoof devil asked for a horseshoe for himself. So then Dustin nailed a red-hot horseshoe tightly on one of his hooves, and the devil howled in pain. The devil begged for Dustin to remove it. Dustin agreed under one condition. The devil must respect the horseshoe and never enter any place where one has, was hung above the door. Okay. Because this people believed that the horseshoe could keep evil out of the homes and thus bring in or keep in good luck. Luck is also attributed to horseshoes because being a blacksmith was considered a lucky trade. Additionally, iron was deemed magical because it could withstand fire. You may also notice that on most horseshoes, and maybe even on horseshoe jewelry, have seven nails in them. Seven was always been referred to as a lucky number. The tradition carried on, and people added on to the legend of the horseshoe. In the Middle Ages, fear of witches ran rampant. It was said that the witches were afraid of horse horses and their iron shoes. People thought that witches would never pass through a door with one hung above it. And people even nailed horseshoes to witches' coffins to keep them from coming out. Oh. Today, you'll still see people still see people with them hung over doors, both inside and out, all around the world. Hanging a horseshoe facing upward, so in a U shape, is said to keep evil out and bring good luck into your home. Conversely, hanging a horseshoe upside down will basically allow all the luck that was previously in that shoe to spill out of the home. Hmm. Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, it kind of makes sense because if you look at how it's shaped, like if you like look at it in the U, it's kind of, it kind of looks like a cup. Yeah, so it kind of looks like pour, a chalice. Yeah, and then it's like, if you have it upside down, it looks like it's pouring out. So yep. that kind of actually makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next superstition that we're going to look at the Ooh, wedding, I like this the one. The wedding band on the, the finger. finger. Yes, I like this one. I love this tradition of wedding. Go ahead. Okay, so, yes, it's the tradition of the wedding band on the finger, which is considered good luck. It is commonly believed that the first examples of wedding rings were found in ancient Egypt. Relics dating to 6,000 years ago, including papyrus scrolls, are evidence of the exchange of braided rings on of hemp or or reeds between spouses. Ancient Egypt considered the circle to be a symbol of eternity, and the ring severed served to signify the perpetual love of the spouses. This was also the origin of the custom of wearing the wedding ring on the ring finger of the left hand, because the ancient Egyptians believed that this finger enclosed a special vein that was connected directly to the heart, dominate denominated in Latin the vena amoris. The Western traditions of wedding rings can be traced to ancient Roman Greece and were first associated with the martial dowry and later with the promise of fidelity. The modern exchange of rings derived from the customs of Europe in the Middle Ages as part of Christendom. In the United States, wedding rings were initially only worn by wives, but became customary for both husbands and wives during the 20th century. Depending on culture, a wedding ring, can a wedding ring is typically worn on the base of the left or right ring finger. Many spouses wear their wedding rings day and night, causing an indentation in the skin that is visible even when the ring is removed. Yes, that is true, and I know because my dad has one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because he wears, cause, well, and my mom doesn't have one, but my dad does because he wears his ring all the time. Yeah. Okay. Since the 19th century in the West, it has been considered unlucky to remove a wedding ring once it has been placed on the finger in church. Interesting. Ooh. Oh. And side note, um, I was talking to uh, them about this, um, and let me just say congratulations to you guys. J. Michael Tatum got married. He's getting he got engaged. I'm gonna pause this real quick. I'll be back in a second. Sorry about that. We are back. But yeah, like I said, uh, J. Michael Tatum just got engaged. Yay. Congratulations, Woo! Michael and Brandon. I'm so happy for you too. And I and you know what? I was telling them, I hope I'm as lucky as you guys one day because I like I hope to find that one person that like I, it's so amazing to find that person that you know you're meant to be with for the rest of your life. And congratulations to you two. I hope you have a wonderful 
marriage and wish years of happiness for you. So congratulations. All okay, right. let's continue. Moving okay. on to our next topic of discussion, breaking a mirror. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I've heard this There's one a too. lot on this. Okay, <laughs> so breaking a mirror is considered bad luck, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, people often think that breaking a mirror may bring you bad luck for for seven years. Uh, mirrors, superstitions probably evolved from the time when the first humans saw their reflection in, in a pool of water, believed believe that an image in the water was their actual soul, and in, and to endanger it would mean risking injury to the other self. Okay. An ancient myth was, was the mirror have magical powers, including the power to for to foresee the future, and and are thought to be device is of the gods. Thus, breaking a mirror would it, er, would terminate its power, or the soul would be astray from the body, and misfortune would be brought upon the one whose re reflection was held last. Dark stuff, guys. Mm -hmm. Damn. <laughs> It was the Romans who tagged the broken mirror or a sign of seven years of bad luck. Length of the prescribed misfortune came from the ancient Roman belief that it took seven years. Oh, wait, I just lost my spot there. It took seven years for life to renew itself. In the person, in looking into the mirror, or were not of good health. Their image would break the mirror and turn bad luck. <laughs> Dude, I keep losing my spot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Itself and run and the run of bad luck would continue for a period of seven years, at the end of which their life would be renewed. Their body would be physically rejuvenated and um, the curse would be ended. In old times, mirrors were not cheap and they were were low quality and easily defected. In order to avoid neglecting it, was told breaking a mirror would bring seven years of bad luck. There, that was a simple scare tactic. A variety of remedies were available to break the spell of misfortune, and the Romans were also responsible for known measures to avoid the curse, use, curse useful for anyone who breaks a mirror. The lucky the list who, who accidentally breaks a mirror and do not wish seven years of ill luck but, um, must take, take a piece of the mirror and bury them in the moonlight, or take a piece and throw them into running water, or pound the broken mirror into tiny pieces so that none of them can reflect anything ever again. And if a person in who breaks a mirror is too lazy or too busy to avoid the curse, it just is uh, it just leaves the broken piece the way it, it was for seven hours, one and for each year of bad luck, and then pick it, it up immediately after the hours are up. So oh, other remedy is including in lightning lighting seven candles on the first night after breaking the mirror and blowing them out oh, at midnight, eat in one breath. Oh, uh, well, another is touching a tombstone with a broken piece of the mirror to avoid it, the bad luck. Perhaps the easiest counter remedy is to make a sink, is to make the sign of a cross, use a cross by a five dollar bill, but that was to be done with a five dollar bill after er, that it's is not known. Okay. Mm. So interesting fact about the Romans thinking life is renewed. It is um, I'm pretty sure it's scientifically proven that all the cells in your body, um, have been replaced after seven years. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, technically they're right. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I and I was telling them this. Another I think another superstition that I've heard about, like breaking the mirror, like what it can do, why it causes bad luck, is because some people believe that, and I don't know where this came from, but I've, I I just heard this, I forget where I heard it, but I heard that some people think that a mirror is actually a link between like 
our world and like the world of the spirits mm-hmm. and some people think that if you break the mirror that it could possibly like allow the evil spirits to come from the other world that's being blocked by the mirror mm-hmm. and allow them to enter our world and that's why it causes bad luck personally what i would do is i would go and smash all the pieces yeah grab the hammer go outside on the on yeah. the porch and go just gets a sludge hammer. Well, plus also, you know what? That's actually that's actually a good that's actually a good remedy one because you don't get bad luck. And two, it's therapeutic. No, well, yeah, yeah. You, if you're, you can, you can you take your anger out on the mirror if you're pissed off at somebody. Yeah. yeah. It's a win win for everybody. Exactly. <laughs> you know, except the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> and haven't you? Okay. Am I the only one ever, out there who's ever like dreamed of just breaking something for the hell of it? I no. wanted to just break something for the hell of it. Okay, <laughs> so anyone who just wants to break something, go into set design, and then and when you get to strike the set, which means tear it down, it's it's very therapeutic. It's great. <laughs> I promise. No, but do I, like, I mean, is that weird? No. Because like, yeah. I see people break stuff with a sledgehammer all the time, and I mean, like, I would love to just be able to, like, break something with a sledgehammer and not have any consequences or not, like, have any fear about it at all. Yeah. All right, so on to our next superstition of discussion. Wishbones. Ooh. The wishbone, located between the turkey's neck and breast, is formed by the fusion of the bird's clavicles at the base of its sternum. The elastic bone is crucial for the bird's flight mechanics. It serves as a spring that holds and releases energy while the bird flaps its wings, attempting to fly. The wishbone might even provide scientific linkage between the anatomy of a turkey and that of the dinosaur. The wishbone breaking game has been around since the days of Plymouth Rock. In fact, it originated with the Etrus- Etruscans. Did not know that till I researched this. Mm-hmm. An ancient Italian civilization who held birds to be future predicting oracles. Wherever the Etruscans slaughtered a chicken, I'm sorry, whenever the the Etruscans slaughtered a chicken, they would harvest its wishbone and set it out in the sun to dry in hopes of prever- preserving the chicken's divine power. Wow, I didn't know chickens were believed to have power. <laughs> okay. Okay, then. Passerbys would then pick up the bone in order to hold it in their hands and softly stroke it while making wishes upon it. Oh. Mm. This is where the wishbone gets its modern day name. When the Romans came in contact with the Etruscans, they took hold of this custom. As legend has it, today's ritual of breaking the wishbone first emerged because of a supply and demand problem. So, many Romans wanted to make wishes upon the chickens Furcula. Furcula, that were that there weren't enough wishbones to go around. The Romans passed the wishbone breaking tradition along to the English, who brought the ritual with them over to Plymouth Rock. Here, the abundance of wild turkeys provided a provoked a switch in the fowl from chicken to turkey. So basically, it was an argument that caused the wishbone starting. Apparently. Okay, and if you guys don't know how the actual wishbone breaking thing works, it's basically, so, two people take the wishbone in their hand, each of them grab one side, they tear it apart, and they say that whoever gets the bigger side, whoever gets the bigger half makes a wish, and their wish will come true. Yep. Yep. All right. Ooh, I love this one. On to our next superstition of discussion, throwing salt over the shorter when you spill it. Yes, and, uh... Yeah, so yeah, the superstition, the next superstition is throwing salt over the shoulder when you spill it, and it is supposed to be, it is usually seen as good luck. Well, okay. it's, it's more seen of preventing no, bad luck. No, preventing bad luck. But no, you know what, this may sound weird, but I can tell you guys I've personally done this, because <laughs> I just am like, I ain't having it, nope, uh-uh, Yeah. nope. Okay, and I even tell my family I, when they spill salt, I go, throw it over your shoulder, quick! <laughs> now, do you know which shoulder to, to throw it over? I don't think there's a specific one, but... Oh, okay. I don't know. Read on it, okay. it'll probably say. Okay. So, for throwing salt over the shoulder when you spill it, the belief, is, the belief in the ill luck that comes from spilled salt is quite old, going back to ancient Rome. In the 1556 hieroglyphics of... 
Piero Villaranio Bolzani reports that salt was formerly a symbol of friendship because of its lasting quality, for it makes substances more compact and preserves them for a long time, hence it was usually presented to guests before other food, to signify the abiding, of, the, the abiding strength of friendship. Wherefore, many consider it ominous to spill salt on the table, and, on the other hand, prop propitious to spill wine, especially if unmixed with water. This may not be the actu this may not be the actual explanation since salt was a valuable com commodity in ancient times and as such was seen as a symbol of trust and friendship. A German proverb held that whoever spills salt arouses enmity. According to Charles Nodier, among savages the action of spilling salt indicates among them the refusal of protection and hospitality from such strangers as they may have reason to suspect are thieves and murderers. This led to the common misconception that due to salt being such a valuable item, Roman soldiers were paid in it. Well, that sucks. Yeah. That sucks big time. I'm sorry, dudes. Well, not for them, um, apparently. Okay. Uh, there is no historical evidence for this belief. The idea is so widely held and has been, this idea is so widely held and has been for so long that the, etymol that the etymology of the world salary comes from the Latin salar sal okay the world the, that the word salary comes from the Latin sal the word from the Latin salarium. salarium and was originally salt money the sum paid to soldiers for the sum paid to soldiers for salt okay one widespread explanation of the belief is of the belief that it is unlucky to spill salt is that Judas Iscariot spilled the salt at the Last Supper, and indeed Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper depicts Judas Iscariot having knocked over a salt cellar. Damn. Well okay. Well, that okay that that explains a whole lot, wow. and yet, yeah, wow, that really explains that that would that explains so much. Yeah. Okay. This is often taken as a questionable explanation because spilling salt was generally considered a bad omen already, and indeed the imagery predicts Da Vinci's usage, or predates Da Vinci's usage. Some some have scoffed at the omen. Herbert Spencer wrote that a consciousness in which there lives the idea that spilling salt will be followed by some evil, obviously uh, obviously allied as it is to the consciousness of the savage, filled with beliefs in omens and charms, gives a home to other beliefs like those of the savage. Even still, a variety of methods are used to avert the evil omen of spilled salt. The most common contemporary belief requires you to toss a pinch of the spilled salt over your left shoulder. Uh, into the again. face of the into, devil. Into the face of the devil who lurks there. Okay, so that's okay. 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 So, uh, lefties, hi. Yeah. Again, going back to the whole left side terminology. Yeah. With it being the okay. devil side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Though generally disregarded as an ineffectual superstition, Professor Jane Risen of Chicago University has published research that shows such jinx avoidance behavior can have a positive effect on people. Can have a positive effect on people's actions after a perceived bad luck event. Ooh. Oh. So it's kind of a placebo effect. Yeah. Nice. It's like if you, because that's the thing. Like it's like, well, I guess. It actually does happen for them because they believe it'll happen. Mm -hmm. okay. So okay. that's interesting. Our next superstition of discussion is lighting three cigarettes with the same match. Who? Well, uh, okay. Well, I was gonna say who would do luck. that? You and, know, what? and it's not for the same person. Like three different people. Oh. oh. Well, okay. Then. For okay, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. Well then. Um, Let's see. So that's no, that kind of makes sense. Perhaps Although you... matches burn, like matches like burn out pretty quickly. So, yeah. like I said, it has to be for three different people. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. Like anyway, like three different cigarettes yeah. of three different people. The so, match burns out quickly. Perhaps you've heard it, it is unlucky to light eight three cigarettes with one match. It might not seem even unlucky. In fact, it seems downright practical. Why waste three matches when you can get the job done with one? One of those theories behind this unlucky strike comes from a mysterious place. The common phrase for lighting three cigarettes with one match is a three on a match. One of, of its origin theories dates back to World War I. If three soldiers decide either to smoke cigarettes together after dark and lit their cigarettes from the same match, superstition help 
certain that at least one of them would end up dead. Whoa. Here's why. The strike of a match would alert an enemy sniper or of the soldier's presence. As the match burned into ate the cigarette, the sniper would have time aim to aim his rifle. Finally, as a third cigarette lit up, the sniper would shoot with the third smoker. Another theory is as is often with the number of three has to do with the Holy Trinity. Some believe using the Trinity's power or, or, oh wait, using the Trinity symbolic symbol, symbol casually, casually. E like the lighting the cigarette in threes is disrespectful, is disrespecting holy law. Oh, doing so can make you powerless in the face of the devil or evil. Well, that one match, etch, the notion goes, could light eat the fire ears of hell. Well, a final and more or sinister theory involves. One, I, Iver Kruger, Kruger, um, also known as the Match King Kruger, or a shrewd and some say a deceitful businessman, thought in many matchmaker factories in the early, bought many matchmaking factories in the 1920s and consolidated them. By securing a monopoly on match productions, he became outrageously rich and powerful. Many believe Kruger er, fabricated the entire superstition that uses that using one match to light three cigarettes was bad luck. Why? To sell more matches, of course. Fuck you, Kruger. Yeah. That's just the way businessmen think. Apparently. Okay, so, on to our next superstition of discussion chopsticks standing upright in a rice bowl Ooh, i've heard of this superstition mm-hmm. too so if you are given rice with chopsticks sticking up in the bowl or you stick chopsticks sipping in your rice sticking vertical in a bowl of rice it is considered bad luck in japan called sukatate bashi it is incredibly taboo because it reminds Japanese people of the incense at funerals, where a bowl of rice is left with two chopsticks standing vertically in the center. It is also supposed to bring bad luck. So wait, if someone serves you with, like, two vertical chopsticks, does that mean that they're hoping you die? I, I don't or know. Maybe? Oh, damn! Well, well, actually, poison question mark? <laughs> well, actually, to be honest, uh, do you, well, because I think, and I don't know if Maybe, maybe this is why, mm-hmm. but most of the time, because, like, I've been to, like, wasabi places in, Jap- like, Japanese restaurants, mm-hmm. usually when something is, as far as I've seen, usually when things, like, especially rice are served with chopsticks, mm-hmm. usually if it's a bowl, it's lying over the bowl horizontally. Yeah. It's lying over the bowl horizontally so maybe that's why maybe because the japanese are superstitious and like even even in some of the in, even in most of the animes i've watched when i've watched like rice being served it's always laying horizontally yeah, over the bowl it's never it's vertically. never vertical in fact it another fun fact it was also mentioned in the wolverine movie where wolverine oh yeah that's Japan. right oh yeah oh yeah that's right Shoot. i almost forgot about that <laughs> i haven't seen that movie in a long time in fact, that was the first time I'd really heard about it. <gasps> mm. Mm. Okay, so, so now moving on to the next superstition. Opening, opening an umbrella, umbrella indoors. indoors. Oh, this is good. Although, actually, and I don't know if you guys know this, but actually, a way to revert to not have bad luck happen when you open an umbrella indoors is to ask the umbrella permission. Oh, I knew that. Oh. I didn't know that. Um, I've always heard, like, that's the thing. I haven't, I learned it recently because, uh, Actually, someone, I was watching a Q&A uh, uh, on a voice actor panel, and someone had opened the umbrella indoors, and sh- and one of the voice actors goes, you just brought bad luck to everybody in, in here, how do you feel about that? And she goes, well, it only brings bad luck if you don't ask the umbrella permission, which I did. So, yeah. Wait, so how does the umbrella respond? I don't know! <laughs> anyway. Okay, so anyway, go, go on to the superstition, superstition of opening an umbrella indoors. Of course, it's bad luck. According to the superstition, a bad okay. According to superstition, bad luck will rain on you if you open an umbrella indoors. One explanation comes from the days when umbrellas were used as protection from the sun. 
Opening one inside was an insult to the sun god. Ooh. Well then. Another theory, an umbrella protects you against the storms of life. So opening one in your house insults the guardian spirits of your home, causing them to leave you unprotected. Ooh. That, 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 <laughs> exactly. That actually makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, it makes, it makes a whole lot of sense. Now, mm -hmm. real quick, do you know any specifics over the knocking over of Tomb Tomb? Tombstones? I mean, or didn't, or not. I mean, I think that there's one where, like, if you knock over a tombstone, then, um, like, not knocking on it, but, like, knocking it over completely, it would, like, release the spirit of the grave. I'm pretty sure that's one. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a superstition. I mean, I don't know why you're knocking over tombstones in the first place, but, like, if you need a reason not to, it's, you'll release the evil spirits. I okay, know. I know this may sound, sound kind of mean, but I can just imagine spirits when people do that go, You dark kids, get off my property! <laughs> dark kids, get off my plot! <laughs> <laughs> you kids, get off my lawn! You dark kids, get off my plot! <laughs> <laughs> exactly! Well then, we're awful people. Okay, you we're know what? It's like, hell. you know what? Sorry, don't knock everyone. Over, don't knock over to. a tombstone unless you want to piss off an evil spirit. Yeah. Or even... I mean, God! Or even make an enemy of a previously nice spirit. Room. The last nice thing you ever want... No, for. you know what? You know what? Just don't, don't... Don't screw with the land of the dead. Don't screw with the realm of the dead, okay? Mm -hmm. Just don't do it. No. Because all you, it does is put you in a world of hurt and pain. And even if you get a nice spirit, I... I can bet that there's some meaner spirits that all like <laughs> come up anyways. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like the one person might not care, but it's like, hey, one of us can go through. Evil spirit runs through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, moving on to our next topic of discussion: placing shoes on the table. Who would do that? That's disgusting. Okay, well it's bad luck anyways. Ugh. So <laughs> it's like dis that's disgusting. Okay. So there's a superstition that it, bad luck will come to a person who places shoes on the table. Another belief common in the north of England is that the tradition in relates to uh, coal mining to the coal mining industry. When a miner died in a <laughs> there's a dog. Okay, <laughs> in a <laughs> coal reaction. Yeah, his shoes were placed on the table as a sign of respect. By extension, in doing so, was seen as. <laughs> <laughs> tempting fate or simply e e bad ta as bad taste. In the world of theater, putting shoes on a dressing room table is considered by some um, to bring the risk of bad performance. I can tell just you, just like, just yeah. I was gonna say I can tell you from personal experience because I'm a I'm a theater girl. Yeah. That that tradition, like that, that, it's totally true. It's totally true. People throughout the theater, when I was in there, would always say, "Don't put your shoes on the table. Don't put your shoes on the table because it's yeah. bad luck. You're gonna give us a bad performance." Yeah. And I never understood why they said that. I'm like, what are you talking about? I would never place my shoes on the table though, because that's yeah. I think that's disgusting. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, anyways. But so, uh, break a leg is considered good luck in theater. Mm -hmm. Also described. As an old wise tale, well, the uh, superstition may date back to medieval times. Some sort is, it, is it ascribed the original to the fact that criminals were hanged while still wearing their shoes. It may have something to do with death, and the idea of placing a new pair of shoes on the table would signify that someone has just died or you would have bad luck for the rest of the day or with someone lose your job even in among people who are not superstitious shoes can be associated with uh contamination oh and yeah. also fun yeah, fact because you don't know where those shoes have been also fun fact it is unlucky to wear anything new to a funeral especially new shoes Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What? Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, wait, at first I was gonna ask you, why is that, why is that disrespectful? But now I, okay, now I kind of understand why. Okay, never mind. Okay, on to our next topic of discussion. Knocking on wood. Considered good luck. Knocking on wood. Or saying, 
or simply saying, knock on wood, after making a hopeful statement is rooted in the idea that you're tempting fate by acknowledging your good fortune. It's thought that the expression comes from the ancient belief that good spirits live in trees. So, by knocking on something wooden, a person was calling on the spirits for protection. Okay, I can get down with that. Okay, so here, here, let's test that theory. I want to be a voice actress one day. <laughs> Help me! <laughs> Help me! <laughs> Help me! <laughs> we'll, Help me. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll keep you updated on this one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping. Let's, fingers crossed. Yep. Okay. On to our next topic of discussion. But help me, tree spirit. We have to work in the morning, so hey, 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 get back from the gate. Come on. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so on to our next topic of superstition discussion. Stepping on a crack. Okay, so, yes. And, of course, I'm sure you guys have heard the praise. Step on a crack, break your mother's back. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, Okay. Misfortune and bad luck are thought to be the results of stepping on cracks in the pavement. It is usually associated with the saying, Step on a crack, break your mother's back! Mm -hmm. However, this superstition originated back in the late 19th century and early 20th century, unfortunately when racism was prevalent in society. The original unkind verse is believed to be either, Step on a crack and break your mother's... Ba wait... The original unkind verse is believed to be either, Step on a crack and your mother's baby will be black... Or step on a crack and your mother will turn black. Oh. oh. Due to the fact that interracial marriages were frowned upon by some, it was also common then to say that stepping on the pavement lines meant you would marry a black person and have a black baby. Well, I apologize for this in advance. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But it's it's just history. Yeah. And it's just what we researched. Go in the side. Yes, yes, go in the side. Go in the side. We're sorry. We're, we're sorry. We don't we don't feel this way. No, we, we don't. Yeah, we we don't believe any of this, but it, well, this is just where it originated from, because back in those days, people were very, very intolerant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so due to the fact that interracial marriages were frowned upon by some, it was also common to say that stepping on the pavement lines meant you would marry a black person and have a black baby. In the mid-20th century, it was common to tell children, children that if they stepped on any cracks in the pavement, they would be eaten for lunch by bears waiting for them around the corner. What? Oh, Damn! What? Oh, what? That's God. fucking gruesome! Oh okay, my God, then. you're going to give that kid nightmares. So you either you either turn a different race, or you get eaten by a bear. Okay. Well, then. Another belief surrounding this superstition is that the number of cracks stepped on indicates the number of bones your mother would break. Oh, Jesus. Oh, this is dark. Oh, my God. I never realized that this was so dark. Okay. <laughs> also, it foretold the amount of china dishes that you would break. Okay. There is also a belief that the cracks in the ground or pavement led directly to the underworld. Thus, by stepping on them, the evil demons that dwell there would be released and bring bad luck. Now, Ooh. that I found interesting when Ooh. researching it. Okay. Oh, I like this next one. We can't do this video without talking about these next two. Okay. Well, so <laughs> I don't know what I don't know if you guys want what triskaidekaphobia is, but it's fear of the number thirteen, which is technically bad luck. Mm -hmm. Okay. The belief that the number thirteen is unlucky is said to be most common. Is said to be the most common superstition. This fear is so widely spread uh, that many assumptions and Hotel was a many apartments and hotels. Oh, apartments. Sorry, you're fine. I can't read. <laughs> apartments and hotels omit it the thirteenth floor, and some um, ains have no thirteenth row. Avoiding the number thirteen is thought to be to stem from Christianity, where there were thirteen guests at the Last Supper. For example, some believe that if you have thirteen letters in your name, you will have of <laughs> you will have the devil's luck. Oh damn! Well then. That's oh, you know, and you know what? You know what I find really, really ironic about this? My birthday is on the thirteenth of December. <laughs> Friday the thirteenth, Jess. No, actually, actually. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> screw you, Jess. Screw you. Okay. Um, actually, it's a cute hat, so I don't, I don't mind. Um, but no, I actually, to be honest. I realized 
my birthday falls on a different day of the week every year, but there is, there was one year, and I told them this earlier today, there was one year <laughs> that my birthday actually did fall on a Friday the 13th. It actually did fall on a Friday the 13th, <laughs> although, actually, it was a pretty good day, so, I don't really... Yeah. All right, Apparently, movie. the devil's pretty lucky. Um, all right, moving on to our final topic of superstition discussion for tonight. The Lucky Charms. Not the kind of cereal you eat, but... No. <laughs> Not the kind of cereal that's magically delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so, it is believed that the ancient Egyptians wore Lucky Charms or amulets as a protection against death and evil spirits. Okay. Due to the... One of the what? oldest was the Eye of Horus. A sky god who took the shape of a falcon. His right eye represents the falcons, including the teardrop sometimes seen below it. Horse was called on by his mother, Isis, to destroy her wicked brother, Set, and lost his eye after a series of battles with Set. When the eye was restored, it was believed to have special powers. The eye symbol, also known as a wajet, a deity with links to the sun, represented of the eye were made of precious metal and endowed its wear with the strength of the life-giving sun. Babies and even valuable livestock were given amulets for protection. Today's Christian gifts are a... Go, <laughs> Um, Today's Christian gifts are are a remnant of the practice. Amulets or talismans worn as bracelets, necklaces, rings, or even belts are usually made of gold or silver. Jewels are semi-precious stones. The five-pointed wizard star was popular in medieval times. It was emblematic emblematic of the mystery, mysteries of the universe and believed to strengthen the, the soul. For the traveler... Wearing an image of Saint Christopher, the patron of Saint The Patron Saint of Travelers. The Patron Saint of Travelers is lucky. According to legend, the Saint once offered to carry a child, who then became heavier than any other burden. He later revealed himself as Jesus. Oh, that's cute. Mm. How sweet. <laughs> Anyways. So. Alright guys, well, we hope that you enjoyed our video today. Because <laughs> God knows we had a good time. <laughs> yeah. um, let us know down in the comment section down below what your favorite superstition is. And drop us some origins about it. <laughs> yep. And hey, what are you guys being for Halloween this year? Let us know down in the comment section down below. Actually... Since we're so, since we're speaking about what we're gonna be for Halloween, <laughs> why don't we tell them what we're gonna be for Halloween? Yes. Okay. Okay. How about you go first, Jess, since it's your channel. All right. So I'm having a Halloween party. So for the party, I'm going as the anime character Ares from the anime Fairy Tale. I. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I am going as uh her. Celestial Wizard, Lucy Hartphilia from Fairy Tale. Yep. And then I am going as Mira, Mira Jane Strauss from Fairy Tale. <laughs> We're all a bunch of fairies. <laughs> we are endowed by the song of the fairies. Don't know if you can see, but got my Fairy Tale swag on. Yep. Oh, and I have a permanent. Yep, I have the Fairy Tale symbol. I've got one on my ankle. I've got a tattoo right. There on my shoulder, but you can't see it since I'm my shirt's in the way. I'm too to get a tattoo up on my own, and I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, when we got ours, Aubrey was talking about getting one, but that's yeah. the thing. You gotta, and I, I stress this to anybody mm -hmm. who's gonna get a tattoo, make sure you think about it. Jess and I thought about it for, like, half a year yeah. before we did it, but. Alright, guys. We're glad we did. Alright, guys, so. well, that's all the time we had for today's video. If you guys want to see more stuff like this happen on the channel, make sure you let me know down in the comment section down below. And if you do want to see more stuff like this, leave me any suggestions, whether it be any songs you want to see done, any topics you want to see discussed, or any games you want to see played, let me know down in the comment section down below as well. Alright, that's all the time we've got for today. Ooh, I know how we should end this. We should all do a big witch cackle together. How about that? Um, uh, or not. Okay, no. never mind. No. Okay. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, that's a bad idea. Guys. I think we're earlier. It would be a good idea. 
Sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah. But that's all the time we've got for today. If you haven't liked this video or subscribed to the channel, now'd be the time to do. You can also follow me on my Twitter at Jess underscore the underscore dragon. That's all the time we've got for today. Jess the Dragon, out. Bye.